Being a 20 year old, I pay close attention to my online presence. If you've been following me, you know how much I like Snapchat. And if not, here's your cue. Earlier this week, Snapchat finally rolled out their much anticipated new UI update. But instead of it making the app more user friendly, it seems that more people are hating it right now. Well, fear not. After having used the app on beta for a couple of weeks, I know what this new update is all about. So here's my little guide on how to get through this new update and get back on your dog filter game. Let's get started. So let's get started with this app now. So once you open the app, you're greeted with your same old viewfinder that we're all used to. A double tap toggles the camera front to back and vice versa. A single tap shows you the available lenses or filters that you may be interested in. So if you're into augmented reality and that kind of stuff, this is where you can play around with that. And yeah, you can just start snapping pictures with this. Though you need to keep in mind that filters and stories still don't work that well in landscape. So kind of tough. And of course, this doesn't work at all if you're using the front camera. Moving on, the screen on your right now shows you stories from all of Snapchat's content partners and verified accounts and basically celebrities. These may not necessarily be the people that you follow. So let's say you find something interesting, you can click on that to start loading the story and if you would like to see more of that you can click on the icon on the top left and then you can subscribe to them by clicking on the subscribe button right here. So this will help you see more of their stories and not miss any of their content. So where did all your stories go? Well, they all reside on the screen to the left now, as you can see over here. So instead of it being all in a chronological order, now it's in terms of relevance, if that makes sense. So the first thing you would see is, of course, stories or messages or chats that you've received directly. And after that, it is all based on an algorithm based on important people according to Snapchat. So, these are usually the stories that you've seen uh, of people that you've seen the most in the past and it goes down from there. So clicking on a person's name actually opens the chat and not the story that you want to see. If you want to see the story, you click on the little circle preview that's over there. This will show their story. And if you want to go back to seeing that story, you have to click on their name and then click on the circle on the top. You can't just really see the story from there. Let's say I can no longer see stories from me if I click on the name. Clicking on the name also shows you the location of where that person is and of course other small settings like calling, texting, all of that. On the chat screen, the UI is pretty similar which means you can just long press the video key to send a short video message to that person and this will just send it through. And yeah, as you scroll, you can just see all your friends and their stories, whatever you like to see, you can keep seeing. So moving on, on the home screen, if a swipe from the bottom shows you your saved snaps and your memories. So a swipe from the top shows you a local contextual search panel where you can see the cool stuff that's happening around you or nearby events or just some other suggested profiles. Pro tip, keep your location on it and then search nearby wherever you live and you could just spot some of your stories being featured over there. And yeah, this is also where you can see your snap map so if you want to have a look what your friends are doing or who are they hanging out with, here's the place. Anyway, Snapchat's snap maps are a little slow. So let's see how long it takes to load all my friends in my city. Snapchat on Android anyway is coded very differently from how it's done on iOS. So that is also a reason why Snapchat works much worse on Android than on iOS, if that makes any sense. So anyway, here's a look at all my friends, hi friends. And then towards the end, clicking on the icon on the top left shows you your settings menu where you can see all your stories, your trophies, your bitmojis and what's happening. So clicking on our story will show you the places where your stories have been featured in and clicking on my story will show you the views on your snaps and if someone's taken a screenshot, stuff like that. And if you just want to add more stories, you have an option down below where you can just click on create new story, make a story that everyone can see. 
England can add, and this is similarly to a geofencing that we had earlier. And the option to send photos has also changed. So let's say this is what I want to click. I click, I go next, and on the top you'll see options for uploading this to your story, our story based on your location and your top chats. Below that will be your six most recent and most used stats. After that will be everyone else in a chronological order. So you can just select whom to send your snap to, yada yada yada, and we can just move on from there. So that will get sent, you'll see your circular yellow loading icon, and then poof, it's gone. So I guess that's about it for this app. I know it's been a little tough journey for Snapchat and I really hope that this brings back the people but looking at the reception that people are giving it right now, seems a little far-fetched. What do you think? So let me know in the comments below if this video was useful and what's your favorite filter? I don't know, let's have a conversation about that. Thanks for watching.